Hello and welcome back. In this video we're going to look at the various levels of inventory control in revenue management and we're going to see how airlines can capture different portions of the revenue opportunity depending on the type of control that they use. We're going to focus mainly on leg versus O and D and I've created a simple little sample network here this airline flies to four cities, Los Angeles, JFK, Boston, and Miami, and we're going to use this little network to illustrate the different types of inventory control. In the last video, we used this example of JFK to Miami to create some fare products. So we had these different fares, and we said that the airline determines how many seats to sell at each fare in order to maximize revenue. Well, in this example, we kind of assumed that everybody on this flight to JF from JFK to Miami is originating in JFK and their destination is Miami. Well, that's really not uh, what you would find on an airline's flight. So let's go back to our network here. And an airline's network, they feed customers onto various legs from different origin points. So on the JFK to Miami leg, you would likely find some customers who were traveling nonstop from JFK to Miami, but you would also find customers who originated in Boston and are connecting in JFK to Miami, and customers who originated in Los Angeles and are connecting in JFK. So you would find a variety of itineraries on the JFK to Miami leg and different fares associated with those itineraries. So I've taken the JFK Miami fares and just took the top three fares and pasted them down here on our network. So here are the three top fares from JFK to Miami. So that's the cost to travel nonstop on this leg. The top three fares from Los Angeles to Miami I put over here. So the YB and M fare are different, of course, so it costs more in this case to travel from JFK to Miami than it does, excuse me, from Los Angeles to Miami than from JFK to Miami. And also I created some fares from uh, Boston to Miami. So we have three different itineraries that could be on this JFK to Miami leg. And now let's see how the airline can discriminate between all of these different customers traveling on this leg in order to maximize revenue. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to say there's one seat left to be sold on JFK to Miami. One seat. Okay, and we're going to try to decide who gets that seat. Let's also assume that there's demand for every one of these fare products. So there's demand for JFK, excuse me, Los Angeles to Miami at $600, $500, $400. There's demand for each one of these fares for Boston, Miami. There's uh, demand for JFK to Miami at each one of these fares. So there's demand for nine different fare products and we have only one seat left to be sold. And the job of revenue management is to choose the customer who's going to have the uh, largest revenue contribution to the network. So let's start by seeing what would happen if the airline was using a leg level revenue management system. The objective of a leg level system is to maximize revenue to the flight leg, so in this case JFK to Miami. A leg level system does not consider the network contribution when it calculates its controls. So this system would see that there's sufficient demand at the highest fare to sell that one remaining seat at $500. The system would set booking limits on the B&M class, so it would close those fares down so that the one seat that's remaining would only be available to be sold to Y class customers. Well, once the system shuts down the B and M classes on the JFK to Miami leg, it's effectively closing down those classes 
for the other itineraries as well because the a customer who wanted to purchase the B fare from Los Angeles to Miami would need it to be available on both legs. So since the B&M classes are already shut down on JFK to Miami, they're effectively shut down uh, on all of the itineraries. So at this point, the leg level system has prevented the last seat from being sold to anything but a Y-class customer. But there are three different Y-class customers, and the question is, which customer is going to get that seat? They each have different levels of contribution to the network. In a leg level system, there's no way to choose between these three customers. So at this point, it would be first come, first serve for the Y class. So if the Los Angeles customer arrives first, then that's the customer who would book that seat and the, the network contribution would be $600. If it was a Boston customer, the network contribution would be $375 and a local customer from JFK to Miami, the revenue would be $500. So I think you can see why an airline might want a greater level of control beyond leg level of control. They may want to control their inventory at the itinerary level or at the O and D level, which stands for origin and destination. They only have one seat left to sell on a flight leg and three different customers competing for that seat. They like to choose from among those customers because they're paying different fares. Now, the answer really isn't that obvious. The airline wouldn't necessarily just want to say take the $600 customer and not these other two because this customer is taking two seats out of inventory whereas this customer is only taking one seat out of inventory. So an O&D system is more complex in that it needs to consider all the network effects when it makes this control decision. You also need a different control mechanism with an O&D system. Uh, you can imagine that a large airline would have many, many different itinerary fare class combinations. It wouldn't be practical to set a booking limit for each one of those combinations. So instead, something called a bid price is used as the control. And we'll talk about that when we talk about network optimization models. So leg level systems compared to O and D systems. O and D systems in theory capture a greater portion of the revenue that is available to the airline. They're also more difficult to use though and you would find in today's airlines that the large majority of airlines use leg level of control. The airlines that can really benefit from O and D are those that have a pretty large portion of their traffic connecting over their hubs and over their connecting points. Airlines with a lot of nonstop traffic, point-to-point -point carriers, don't really get enough benefit from O&D control to outweigh the complexity of using the system. And at some point I'm going to do a video on how an airline should choose a revenue management system. It's not about finding the most complex approach, it's about finding the right fit for the airline's models and the type of revenue opportunity that it has available to it.